Janome. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Michael Smith. I'm the National Consumer Education Manager of Janome Canada, and I'm coming to you from the Janome Sewing and Learning Centre in Oakville, Ontario, to talk about some of our fabulous machines in the Janome line to help you get your quilting projects done quicker and easier than ever. Now, the fabulous ooh, Continental M7 is definitely a big machine in the Janome line. This is actually the largest uh, machine in the domestic market. We have 13.5 inches to the right of center needle position. So how fabulous is that? It's a all metal base, very sturdy. You know, the joke at our uh, Janome Institute when we debuted this machine about two years ago was it was like the 6700P and the 9450 got together and had this very big baby that we have a lot of the industrial-like features of the 6700 but we also have some decorative stitches that you can do so it's a really great combo machine for whatever kind of sewing you would like to do and certainly quilting. So there's many fabulous features that we can talk about. I have the machine recessed into one of our fabulous Aero Kangaroo tables, so make sure that you check with your Janome dealer about, uh, there's many different tables now available to either recess your machine in, or the machine can of course sit on top of the table. There is a big extension table included, so that's fabulous. So yes, immediately we can see, again, 13.5 inches to the right of the needle. How fabulous is that? But, and look at all this beautiful LED lighting all around the needle here and all through the bed of the machine. The needle area itself has been sort of carved and shaved back a little bit. So we can see totally overhead directly at the needle. So that is great. Improved visibility is definitely a big plus of this machine. Now we do have a needle threader built in as well. So that is great. Very convenient. Oh, we have many features that every sewist and quilter loves. The stop start button, for example. So we don't need to use the big extra large foot pedal that comes with the machine. We can unplug it and use stop start. So that's great if we so choose. Uh, we've got the reverse button, the lock button, uh, needle up and down button. Uh, we've got the scissor button to trim your threads automatically. So that's wonderful. Uh, auto presser foot lift, so I can raise and lower the presser foot by selecting that button. But we also have the presser foot lift manually at the back. There's a big black lever at the back of the machine to raise the presser foot. Now, as you'll see, I've got this extra high presser foot lift as well. Like I can get my finger right under there. So this is easily about a half of an inch high. So if you've got some dimensional quilting, you've got maybe two layers of batting, you're using some really fluffy polyester batting, or you're doing maybe some quilted uh, tote bags, for example, then again, you've got some extra high presser foot lift here to get your project under. Now, a unique feature to the Continental M7 is my feed dogs are down. The feed dogs automatically, as soon as you stop sewing, the feed dogs automatically drop. So that is great if I've got those thicker, bulkier layers and I'm getting them under my presser foot here, the feed dogs are recessed down. So they're not getting in the way, they're not catching on my fabric, they're not fighting me as I'm trying to load the fabric under the needle. As soon as I lower my foot and start sewing, those feed dogs will automatically raise and start feeding our fabric. So that was a new invention with the Continental M7. So how cool is that? Uh, speaking of feed dogs, we've got seven points of uh, feeding down here. So again, the, the feeding power of Continental M7 is amazing. We have 1,300 stitches per minute. So it is the fastest domestic uh, machine other than the HD9 or 1600P is 1,600 stitches per minute. So the Continental M7 at 1,300 is very close. <laughs> so you can go super fast. Now, speaking of super fast, we do have a speed control though. So if you're doing some intricate stitching, maybe stitching around applique, you might want to lower that speed. Or again, if you're teaching someone to sew, then maybe they would like to turn the speed down. And then when you get more comfortable, uh, certainly as you're doing your free motion quilting, maybe all over meandering or straight line piecing, then yes, we can crank that up and go as fast as we want. So that's great. Uh, we come over here to our beautiful 7-inch LCD screen so we can select things like, oh, our um, 
stitch width and stitch length, we can uh, either select on the LCD screen or to go a little further over, we can also adjust stitch width with these uh, knobs. So these are a little more like, uh, again, sort of more basic industrial machines have these, the 6700 has these. So you can adjust them either way with the little knobs or again, you can adjust on your LCD screen. So how great is that? There's lots of information uh, contained within your LCD screen to again help you make your selections quicker and easier so you spend less time adjusting the machine and more time actually sewing. So we'll go over some of these functions in just a minute. As we continue to pan over the machine, uh, we've got the wonderful telescoping thread stand for the vertical spool pins, just like we have on the big industrial machines in the garment sewing industry, the telescoping thread stand and vertical spool pins, just like we have on the big Janome Quiltmaker Pro uh, long arm quilting machines. So we get that optimum thread delivery for the high speed machines. So that's wonderful. Uh, as we come a little bit down to the front of the machine, we do have a separate bobbin winding motor so we can uh, thread up a bobbin without unthreading our needle, and we can wind a bobbin even while we're sewing. So, you know, how cool is that? So we never have to take any time away from our uh, production. Uh, and in fact, there's even a little thread cutter here at the top of the machine, so you can cut your bobbin thread after you've finished uh, winding. So isn't that convenient? Now we'll cast our eyes ooh, down at the table and see some of our fabulous presser feet included with the machine. There are so many fabulous presser feet included with your Janome machine. So they come in this beautiful accessory box. So how great is that? Everything can slip into place. And of course it comes with the usual seam ripper and little brush to clean out your bobbin area, the screwdriver. And then, oh yes, a whole nother tray here. I love this little bobbin holder that we can take this out and put it next to our machine. So very convenient. Put it back here. The accessory case will fit our other two included needle plate. The Continental M7 machine comes with three needle plates in total. And I will go over these in just a minute. So again, all of that will fit in our fabulous accessory case. And this accessory case is available by itself. Uh, it does not come with all these presser feet, <laughs> but it just comes empty uh, that you can get that from, again, your Janome dealer. So that is fabulous. Now, yes, let's go down to the bed of the machine to see all the, some of the fabulous presser feet and attachments and uh, accessories included, which any quilter will love. So when we talk about uh, piecing our quilt, for example, we have some piecing feet like our O foot, or here's our O foot, the quarter inch foot with a guide. So depending on your preference, if you would like a guide or not, then you have that option. Now the fun thing about these quarter inch feet, uh, there is a big long groove that would represent my center needle position. Uh, we've got the little notch here to the front so if I want to stop with my needle here, there's a groove right there to um, indicate the needle. So if I wanna stop a quarter of an inch from the edge of my fabric, if I was doing like some inset seams, some Y seams, then again, there's this little notch on the foot so my uh, fabric could line up with that. And then again, my needle is up here. So I'm stopping a quarter of an inch from the edge. If I wanna start sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge of my fabric, again, we've got another notch up here. So the quarter of an inch, uh, the edge of the fabric would go up here. Your needle, again, is a quarter of an inch away. So you can start sewing a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. So again, you have all of those markings built in. Janome is always trying to help you and do some of that math. And the same markings on the O foot with the guide. So that's great for your piecing. Also to help in your piecing, oh, this fabulous HP foot, and I will be demoing all of these. Um, but you know, for more information about all of our Janome presser feet, I did an Instagram series on our Janome HQ Instagram page uh, called A to Z with Janome, because you know, most of our Janome feet are lettered. So I went through A to Z with Janome and also Janome's awesome accessory countdown. So I talked about more feet and attachments. 
Now those uh, videos are all on the Genomi HQ Instagram channel, but they're also on the Genomi HQ YouTube channel. So you can go back to review all of these. Uh, but yes, this HP foot again is uh, very much akin to the feet in the garment industry that the ankle, the foot holder and the foot itself are attached. So there's no movement side to side. So this foot is the perfect quarter of an inch or everyone loves it for that scant quarter of an inch. Again, it's just absolutely perfect. Now the HP needle plate, which I will talk about in just a minute, when you snap that in the machine, the needle will swing over to the left to this groove here. And same thing, I've got some markings where this uh, notch represents my needle position. And then again, I've got a notch a quarter of an inch from that. So I can always stop a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. So it's a very cool, beautiful little slim foot. Uh, perfect if you wanna uh, sew around curves, if you're piecing um, drunkard's path blocks, for example, this uh, will really help you set in those curves without using pins. So that's a great foot for piecing. Oh, and then we get into, and we're actually going to do some quilting. Yes, we have a ruler foot, the QR foot and again it's got the little uh, divot in the front so then we can uh, really see the needle when we want to use rulers safely with our machine it comes included and we'll go over this ruler foot now for free motion quilting oh we've got so many options we have the pdh foot is the darning foot so we have the closed toe version or we also have the open toe version. So it's whatever you prefer. Again, Janome is always about giving you options. Now I demoed these uh, feet, the PDH foot in the, again, A to Z with Janome series, but also check out our Janome Life blog. Our Janome Canada artisan, Kim Jameson Hurst, really loves these darning feet too. And she has done a lot of blogs on Janome Life blog about using these darning feet for free motion quilting. We have more free motion quilting feet. Oh yes, our big clear view foot. I often say it's like a dinner plate. <laughs> uh, and it's got, again, a lot of these red markings, a quarter of an inch from the needle to help you if you want to do like some echo quilting around applique, for example. So that's an option. Again, we've got an open toe, very small, slim foot. Or we've got the open, uh, or the closed toe version, and that's the open toe version. And then we've got even the QZ foot is the variable zigzag foot. And again, I demoed this on the A to Z with Janome series. Uh, this is for the variable zigzag function built into the Continental M7. But a lot of people like it for free motion quilting because again, it's a very slim, low profile uh, foot. So you can really see where the needle is. So you've got all these different options for your quilting. Another option for quilting, so those were free motion quilting. So if we wanna do quilting, yes, with our walking foot, or this is our AccuFeed Flex foot, I call it a walking foot on steroids. Uh, this little hook here uh, clips into the upper feeding mechanism of the machine. So it integrates the walking foot into the machine. So we have our wonderful seven point feed dog system uh, on the underneath side to feed our fabric. And here, by activating the AccuFeed, then we have our upper feed dogs uh, working at the same time to feed our layers evenly. Great if you're going to be quilting through all layers, you know, maybe doing some cross hatching, straight line quilting. So that is great. Now we also have, ooh, a very special foot, again, much like that HP foot, that same profile, that same perfect scant quarter of an inch. But this is the HP two foot. And Janome is so good at, again, labeling everything so we can't make any mistakes. So here is the HP two foot that again integrates to the upper feeding mechanism of the machine. So it's like the HP foot profile with the power of AccuFeed to feed uh, again so consistently. This has become my new favorite quarter inch piecing foot. So, so many options. Now, speaking of quilting as well, we can use, oh yes, our quilting guide bar that comes included in so many machines. You know, I love Janome is uh, such an innovator with so many great new uh, technologies, new engineering, but things like this quilting guide bar, oh, it's been around forever. 
and they realize, oh, it's not broke, so we're not going to do anything to change it. It slips into the little hole in both your HP two foot and here is your dual feed holder for your AccuFeed Flex foot. So we can do, again, crosshatch quilting and adjust this bar however far we need to to do a lot of our quilting. But if you want to follow me, ooh, way over here. <laughs> Did you know this is our regular A foot that is the zigzag foot attached to the machine? There is a hole here in the foot holder. So yes, I can attach the quilting guide bar to the regular foot holder. So I can use it with any of the snap-on feet as well. So that is great. It's lots of fun. And as an optional accessory, oh, you know, there's always more. Uh, from your Janome dealer, you can get these fabulous long quilting guide bar sets. So if you want to do, again, a lot of that crosshatch quilting, straight line quilting, you can put these quilting guide bar in very far and there's even one for the left hand side. There are many times people said I wanted to use my quilting guide bar to the left hand side but then they'd have to turn the bar over like that when it's really supposed to be used like that. So by having this long quilting guide bar set again now you have a left and a right quilting guide bar. So isn't that cool? So again there's always options. These are available from your Janome dealer. So that is great. So yes, let's get into some piecing. So here, if we go up to our fabulous LCD screen, then our machine tells us that yes, here is the A foot. I'm in my utility stitch category with my regular straight stitch. I'm in center needle position, which is 4.5, because on our patented needle plate, we have a nine millimeter wide opening there. So half of nine millimeters is 4.5. So if I just want to do, oh, like half square triangles, I just drew a line down the center here. And then I can use just my regular utility zigzag stitch or my regular straight stitch to do my uh, piecing here. Now my stitch length, I've got, oh, the default is at 2.4. And again, I can easily adjust it here on my LCD screen, or I could adjust it at the little knobs here to the side. So when I'm doing my piecing, I like to uh, shorten my stitch length to 1.8. You can switch it to whichever you wish. Uh, we've got the little adjust key here, so we can go in to again adjust stitch width, length, our needle tension, the uh, presser foot pressure. Uh, we can change. Uh, we can also save the adjustments that whatever we make here as a favorite stitch. So if I wanted to change my regular utility straight stitch from a 2.4 to a 1.8, I can select again favorite stitch, my little folder, and then favorite stitch one. And now all of those adjustments that I've made are now in yellow. So then I've see that yes I can adjust my stitch length so it's even smaller so a nice tight stitch so I don't have to back stitch or lock stitch so if I go and make some adjustments I go to other stitches and then go back to that same utility straight stitch there I see my favorite stitch has been recorded so whatever adjustments you want to make on any of these stitches Again, any of these adjustments that you can save as a favorite stitch. Now you can also uh, delete that with your little garbage can here, and then it's gone. So if I go back to my other stitches and come back, then it's back to my default at 2.4. The nice thing as well, when you make any of these adjustments, you don't have to worry as you're adjusting and then go, oh no, what was the original setting? You don't have to write anything down. You just hit default and then everything goes back to factory settings. So that's really cool. So there, that is for if we wanted to do some piecing, but oh, instead of making those adjustments, we can just go to our little t-shirt icon here to sewing applications. And the sewing applications menu is asking us, well, basically, what do you want to do? So if I were a garment sewer, again, I've got so many selections of doing a, a rolled hem or doing a over edge 
finish like a, a serger would do. Uh, you know, if I wanted to put in a zipper, I've got all of these functions. Or with this little flower with the little feathers, this is my quilting category. So what do I want to do? Oh, I would like to piece some patchwork piecing. So it's going to now recommend I switch to the O foot. So I'm going to raise my foot and then snap on very easily. There is a, a little black bar at the back of the foot holder to release the foot. Boom, I'm all set up here uh, with my O foot. You choose if you want the foot with the guide or not. And now the machine is automatically set up that I have my 1.8 stitch length and it's moved my needle over to the right at 8.3. So my needle automatically by selecting that stitch has moved over. Now let's say, but that's still not as far over as I would like. That will give us a quarter of an inch, which is beautiful and I love having that guide so I can go really fast and not have to worry about uh, anything slipping. But I now have this um, option of memorized piecing. I can choose to do the same size, or if I want to do a different length, then I just click the X. But if I hit OK, and then I'll cut my threads, if I go to stitch another piece of patchwork, it's going to memorize that same length, and then it's going to ask me, restart for the same size or a different size. So how cool is that? This is especially great if we're doing, again, those inset or those Y seams. So that's wonderful. But yes, let's say if I want, oh, 8.3 is my quarter of an inch, but sometimes, again, we like to do that scant quarter of an inch. So again, I always have choices with Janome. So I can move, again, the needle position over a little more to the right. To nine millimeters. We've got ultimately 91 needle positions with the Continental M7 given it is a nine millimeter wide machine. Now I could also go into my adjust key and save this as a favorite stitch so then I don't have to make that adjustment continually. I do it once and then save it and then there again do I want the same size or different size using that patchwork piecing function in the sewing applications. So how cool is that? And we even have a selection where, oh, it'll do a back stitch or it'll do the locking stitch at the beginning and the end of the stitch. So again, there's always choices. So that is some piecing options. So now we can go back into our sewing applications menu and let's say, oh, we want to do some of that free motion quilting. So yes, I have a sewing application. Again, the machine asks us, well, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to do some free motion stitching. Again, the machine is telling me, oh, to switch to that PDH foot and the machine has automatically dropped the feed dogs. As you can see over here, this little icon, there's a straight line and the little feed dogs icon is, is below that. So the machine has already set it up for me. So it's telling me switch to my PDH foot. So I will not only remove my foot, but I'm going to remove the whole foot holder as well because the PDH foot has the foot holder attached basically the spring that'll go up and down. But this bar up here needs to go over your needle bar. Sometimes I get a message and people say, oh, this foot doesn't work. Well, it's because this bar needs to be over that needle clamp screw. That is what is gonna make it work. So we can put that on and we definitely want to use our screwdriver that comes included. Uh, you know, when I started sewing about 30 years ago, I always thought, oh, I'm a big, strong man. I don't need to uh, use that screwdriver at all. I would just finger tighten my, my foot. But because I generally sew quite fast, uh, the foot actually fell off a couple of times. So I realized, nope, I'm not going to take that uh, chance anymore. Now, a lot of people love using our straight stitch needle plate when they do their free motion quilting and ruler quilting. And you can see the difference here because I've got that single hole right in the middle. I do have a hole here to the right and the left, so we can make some adjustments with the straight stitch needle plate. We can move the needle over a little bit to the right or a little to the left. 
Uh, the cool thing is when I snap this needle plate into position, it's going to gray out all those other stitches that are not compatible with this needle plate. So another fabulous function of the Continental M7 is, again, it does some thinking for you. So it really tries to prevent you making a mistake. Now you'll see on our patented needle plate here, we have some very uh, convenient markings, uh, especially when we're talking about quilting for our piecing. We do have this little notch here. There's a notch way up here, a notch all the way, including even the bobbin cover and all the way down to the front of the machine, which is our quarter inch for our piecing, again, that we would just line up our fabric with those notches there. So that's for our quarter inch. If we're our garment sewer, we've got five eighths of an inch. So even we move that over and there on our patented needle plate are the markings for five eighths of an inch. If we want to stop sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge, our needle is up here, but there's a big long line here that's a quarter of an inch from the needle so then we'd be stopping with the needle a quarter of an inch from the fabric or again if we want to start sewing a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the fabric we have this nice long line here a quarter of an inch and then our needle would be there so again we would start sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge and there's even the metric uh, centimeters as well here. So depending on if you're inches or metric, you've got some uh, measurements here on your patented needle plate to help you out. Now, in order to switch out these needle plates, oh, this is another ingenious uh, new feature, uh, innovative feature of the Continental M7 is we don't need our little screwdriver to uh, disengage this needle plate. We simply lock our screen touch our LCD screen and boom, this needle plate rises all on its own. It's like magic, it's amazing. So here is our zigzag, again, nine millimeter wide needle plate, again, with those same convenient markings of a quarter of an inch, half of an inch, five eighths of an inch. So that's fabulous. So now when I snap this into place, there is a magnet, a very strong magnet here on the uh, bed of the machine that is going to hold this needle plate in and boom it just snaps right in it is so fabulous now the machine again has done some thinking for us so it tells us oh there's a straight stitch needle plate in place so then i unlock the machine and then again these zigzag free motion stitches that i did have available to me just a minute ago are now all grayed out i cannot use them i can only do a straight stitch with this straight stitch needle plate in now some people really love the straight stitch needle plate for piecing because again there there isn't the wide opening as there is on the zigzag needle plate so when you're piecing then you don't have to worry about like the edge, the little tip of your fabric going in that uh, opening there. So you can use your straight stitch needle plate for piecing as well. Or again, a lot of people like using it for free motion quilting. And again, so your fabric isn't going to get pushed down in that uh, needle plate area. Whenever I find though my fabric is being pushed down into the needle plate area, it usually means I have a dull needle, so I have to change that. So now that I have my uh, feed dogs lowered and my PDH foot on, then away I go. I become the stitch regulator. And I find a lot of the times when people are having trouble with free motion quilting, it's to find that sweet spot of moving your hands at the correct speed of the motor speed of your machine. Uh, I find a lot of times for beginners, uh, people will move the fabric too fast, but their machine motor will be a little too slow. And then you'll start seeing the needle start bending and, and flexing, and maybe you'll break a needle or two. Uh, it's because you're not moving your, or you're moving your fabric too fast. Your machine isn't going fast enough to keep up with your movements of your hands. So it's good to slow down your hands, but crank up the speed of your machine. Now, some other tools that are available to you to help you with your free motion quilting. 
Uh, some people like to wear, you know, gloves that have little rubbery grips on them. But if your hands really get sweaty and the gloves are just too constricting, Janome has this fabulous, so comfortable line of products, again, available from your Janome dealer. We have these quilting paddles, for example. So if, if it's too hard, especially if, again, if you've got carpal tunnel or um, some uh, arthritis, and if it's too hard to grip the fabric, you can instead grip these paddles and they give you a little bit more control over where you're quilting. Now we also have, again, Janome's all about choices. So, oh, these are my favorite. I love them mainly because they say Janome. <laughs> so these are very cute. And then, yes, yeah, so you just put the petals around where you're quilting. I always do this ribbon candy. <laughs> I, it's very fun. Again, great on a sashing, great as a fill, but especially sashing or borders. It's very fun to do. And it's just, oh, it's just so relaxing. So these, uh, all these quilting paddles have this great uh, grippy, rubbery surface on the back to again, grip your fabric to help move everything. So you're not gripping the fabric itself uh, as much. Or then, oh yes, we have, ooh, even more, these big, so comfortable hoops. There's two quilting hoops. That's basically like a steering wheel to help you again move your fabric uh, more conveniently. So these are all available from your Janome dealer. You can uh, go online to our Janome.ca website for more information on those, or also check out our Janome Life blog. There are several blogs all about the so comfortable line of products. So this is again free motion that we have available again so many free motion options of our Continental M7. But I'm going to remove this foot and talk about our fabulous ruler foot. And again, I'm leaving my straight stitch noodle plate on. This is our QR ruler foot. Again, I demoed that on our A to Z with Janome series under the Q uh, for the QR foot. Again, I go back up to my uh, sewing applications on my LCD screen. And again, it's wonderful having sewing applications. It just takes a lot of that guesswork. How do I set up my machine? It's already done for you. We just hit ruler work, boom. Feed dogs are dropped. It's telling us to use that QR ruler foot. And we still have some options. You can always still customize. Even though the machine is already set up for you, you are still ultimately in control. So of the medium choice, when I go into my um, adjust key here, I see that, oh, the presser foot is hovering about 2.5 millimeters up from the fabric. When you're free motion quilting, when you're ruler quilting, again, your fabric is just, your presser foot is just hovering over your fabric. So if I've got a really lofty batting, if I've got two layers of batting or some, again, fluffy polyester batting, maybe I need, oh, that need, uh, presser foot to hover maybe 3.0 or even 3.5 above the fabric. Or conversely, if we go back to our selections, maybe I select the light option and go into the adjust key. It's at 1.5 millimeters above the edge of the fabric, the surface of the fabric. If I've got uh, maybe some uh, cotton batting or maybe even some cotton flannel, not really batting in between my uh, layers of my backing and my quilt top, if I've got a thinner layer, then I can use this 1.5 millimeter uh, above the fabric. Uh, I just have a quilt sandwich here of some cotton uh, backing and uh, some 80-20 batting, which is not particularly uh, thick, so I'll just use that 1.5, but again, I could always adjust it up to a 2.0. And then, when we attach our QR ruler foot, again, uh, we take off our regular foot holder and attach. Again, we definitely want to use the screwdriver here to tighten that up because once I use the rulers, which we're going to butt up against the foot. So we definitely want to make sure that that foot holder is secure and in place. Now our ruler 
kit, Janome Ruler Kit, is a great place to start if you're new to ruler quilting. This is in fact what I started with doing domestic uh, quilting rulers. I've used rulers on my long arm quilting machine but never on the domestic machine. So the Janome Ruler Kit is great because it's got the DVD, they've got full written instructions, they have all the rulers and templates, the marking tool, everything that you need is all included in this kit. Uh, the only thing you need to supply is your creativity, a little bit of thread and some fabric. Uh, chances are you have all that. So here you make this cute little ruler bag using the rulers and the templates that are included in that ruler kit. So it's really fun. And again, a DVD included, which is very good to watch because there is full instructions there. So it's really fun to use these rulers and templates, again, in full instructions included. And Janome started with those, the ruler kits, but now, oh yes, available separately. Look at all these in the so comfortable range. All these templates, we also call them again rulers, but they're really templates. Uh, circles, for example, oh, I couldn't really do that free motion wise, but wow, I have a template so I can easily go around that. So that's the joy of quilting with these rulers and quilting templates. And again, there's so many now available in the So Comfortable line available from your Janome dealer. And the cool thing about all these rulers and, and templates is, uh, again, they're all fully marked, so you really don't have to mark your fabric very much. And there's full instructions included that'll teach you how to use all of these. Uh, but why we want to use this QR ruler foot when we're doing ruler quilting is, again, the profile of that foot is a nice thick, it's about a quarter of an inch thick. We definitely want that high profile when we're using these rulers. They're about an eighth of an inch thick, a little bit thicker than your uh, rotary cutting rulers. Uh, but again, we want that high profile foot because we do not want this template, if we had a regular low profile foot, we would just bump right over that foot and hit our needle. Uh, we don't want to have our foot too high above our fabric. Maybe the foot or the ruler might even slip under that foot. So, which is also why we don't want to use these domestic machine quilting rulers on a long arm machine. These are too thin. They will go under the hopping foot of a long arm machine. So we only want to use these thinner, about an eighth of an inch thick uh, rulers and templates on our domestic machine. So by having that uh, higher profile, again I've got that little divot there in my foot so I can really see the needle. I've got a one stitch stop to bring up my bobbin, which I won't bother to do, but again, boom. Whenever we're using our rulers, and particularly like this long one, we need to, as we're getting close to the end of the template, stop, breathe, <laughs> relax your shoulders, and you want to move your template. So then you keep your hand almost in line with the, the foot, so you have that better control, and you're kind of pushing gently the ruler, the template, up against the foot. And as you move along, the fun thing about rulers, oh yes, I don't need to pivot my fabric, I just pivot my ruler. So now I can quilt in any direction a lot quicker and easier that again, you're not stopping and starting. So how fun is that? And you can totally do whatever you wish. And again, a lot of these rulers and templates are totally marked. So all you have to do is follow the instructions <laughs> uh, and then away you go. Like, it's so fun. So this template is one of my favorites. It definitely doesn't look like much now, but again, the secret is uh, paying attention to the instructions, uh, watching the DVD, and then yes, as I quilt this, again, it, the template is all marked for us. So how cool is that? You can really get into some fun shapes. And again, as I'm going around, I want to make sure that the template stays against the ruler foot. Again, that QR foot, that's why we need to use that thicker foot. So how cool is that? Look at that. So from that into this beautiful heart. So isn't that beautiful? Ooh. 
Now, not included with your Continental M7 are these fabulous mini duckling scissors that I absolutely love. These are perfect for uh, embroidery in the hoop applique in particular uh, because of that duck bill that you're not going to trim your fabric underneath. But I love having these next to my machine to trim those little stray threads that I don't always uh, trim off at the beginning. So that is ruler quilting in a, in a nutshell. It is a lot of fun to do. Uh, you know, I also did an um, online class on the Continental M7 uh, that is available now as a recording. So you could write me all at classes at genomi-canada.com and I could send you the registration for that class. And then you sign up to the Continental M7 class and I send you the recording uh, to see a lot of the functions of the machine and to see a lot of these feet in play uh, as well. So that's also another option to get more from your Continental M7. So that is ruler quilting. And now we can talk about doing some uh, maybe straight line quilting with our fabulous AccuFeed flex foot, again, which is like a walking foot on steroids. So this little hook here at the back needs to hook into the back of the machine into the upper feeding mechanism. So I always like to put my finger across that and tighten it up a little bit with the screw. Then I drop my foot and then tighten the rest of it up with that screwdriver. So now again that foot is not going to move at all. So if I want to do just some uh, straight line quilting, for example, I'm going to go back up to our sewing applications. And uh, again, we've got some other uh, selections of quilting stitches, but I'm going to get out of there and just go back into our regular utility uh, straight stitch. And then when I want to engage the AccuFeed, then up here we've got a little icon with the three triangles and the two lines. Now, again, the machine tells us, make sure you've got that proper presser foot on. Yes, I do. Now that icon is in yellow, so I know I have the AccuFeed motor. There is a separate AccuFeed motor in the Continental M7. That is yet another of its new innovations. So now the machine is telling me to use the AD foot, which comes on our twin or dual holder here. Now, generally when I do my quilting through all layers, I will lengthen my stitch from 2.4, I like just personally, to a 3.0. The thicker your project, the longer your stitch length needs to be in order to accommodate going through those layers. So just very easily, very quickly, and again, you see those upper feed dogs in play. And sometimes people message me and say, oh, my AccuFeed foot is not working. It's because you don't have that AccuFeed uh, engaged. That's why. So again, how simple, how easy it is. And again, I could be using my quilting guide bar. Just slipped into place, oops, <laughs> slipped into place very easily, very quickly. So now if I wanted to follow, you know, my previous line, I'll follow that red line of stitching. Again, I can just move my bar. And away I go, like how simple, how easy is that? The fun thing is when you get your fabulous Continental M7 at home, oh yes, you will be making a sample like this and you will be stitching all over the place. Uh, that's fine. That's part of the fun of learning your machine. After this, you can cut this all apart and, and try to make other projects with it. Or I think this is great for like lining the, the cat bed or the, the dog crate or something like that. So nothing goes to waste. So that is our big AccuFeed flex foot. And there is actually some extra feet available because the joy of this AccuFeed flex foot is that the actual foot itself whoops, uh, comes off. So you can get different AccuFeed flex feet to snap into this twin or dual holder. So that you can check, again, more information on the Genomi uh, website, but also again with your Genomi dealer. Uh, and again, also check out Genomi Life blog and of course, Genomi HQ. Uh, 
YouTube channel for more on the AccuFeed Flex Feet and the Janome Awesomes Accessory Countdown series that I did uh, that I talked specifically about some of these AccuFeed Flex Feet. So that's very fun to do your quilting, but also to do our quilting or our piecing, uh, I want to talk about this fabulous HP needle plate. Now, sometimes people say, oh, well, that's the straight stitch needle plate because it's got a single hole. But again, our straight stitch needle plate has a single hole in the center. The HP needle plate has a single hole off to the left. Now, conveniently, it is also marked HP, which stands for high performance. And here on our uh, bobbin cover, HP is also marked here. So again, Janome is always trying to help us out. Now we have a lot of those same markings, again, for quarter of an inch, five eighths of an inch, all of that on the HP needle plate and HP bobbin holder. Again, to change our uh, needle plate, simply lock the machine. I click that in, like how simple, how easy is that? And then snap into place, boom. So now I want to use the fabulous HP2. Look, it even said HP2. Like again, the machine just does the thinking for us. So now here is the HP2 foot that I'm going to quickly attach. And by having that HP needle plate snapped in to the machine, the needle, the machine recognizes the needle plate and the needle has swung over to the left automatically. This is why we can't use the HP needle plate with any other, you know, nine millimeter machine. The HP needle plate is very specific to the 6700, 6650, the, uh, Oh, uh, Memorycraft 15,000, you know, a couple of machines that have the HB needle plate, but, uh, you know, not all of the nine millimeters will take it uh, because of we want the machine to recognize that it'll swing the needle over to the left. So now with that HP needle plate, oh, well, when I talked about quarter inch piecing, yes. I like using this foot when I'm doing my piecing. So if this were my big long strip, for example, again, I have quarter of an inch markings on my needle plate. This is the perfect quarter of an inch foot. Now, because I like doing it for piecing, I can just, uh, again, uh, reduce my stitch length if I so choose. And away I go. Like, it's so simple, so easy to do. Now also for piecing, of course, I could use my regular HP foot as well. I don't need to necessarily use the AccuFeed as, as is with the HP2 foot. Uh, I don't need to use the AccuFeed always for my piecing. I just, I like to, <laughs> it's fun. Uh, but then yes, I could just use the regular HP2 foot as well for regular piecing. So again, it's so quick, so easy to do. Again, 1,300 stitches per minute. It's fabulous. Uh, Janome America's uh, national spokeswoman, Kimberly Imo, has done a lot of Facebook Lives on the Janome America uh, Janome Sewing Machines page. Uh, Kimberly has done a lot of Facebook Lives on the Continental M7 and all the various adjustments. Uh, so make sure you check out the Janome Sewing Machines page. Uh, to see some of Kimberly's presentations on the Continental M7. There's, again, so much machine uh, that you can do. Basically, any kind of quilting you'd like to do, you can do on your Continental M7. Now, when we talk about uh, binding our quilts, I just wanted to give you all a heads up, too, that, ooh, from your Janome dealer, you can get, oh, yes, this cool little, here's all my binding. I wind it all up on a pencil, great if it's a Janome pencil, <laughs> but I wind up my binding strip, whatever wide you want it to be, wind up your binding strip, and then you put it on the base of this tape stand that comes included like this. So it's the tape binder that again, you get as a uh, optional accessory from your Janome dealer. And I just love it no matter what kind of binding you're gonna do, I love it because then I place it off to like the side of my machine and then as I'm binding my quilt, 
if this were my big quilt here, ooh, it's because my roll of binding is so big, that yes, as I'm binding my quilt, then I can just lay it up on my quilt very easily. And as I'm binding, it'll just feed off all to itself. So before I always had my big strip of binding all on the floor and I'd run my chair over it, my cat would play with it. Well now I put it up on my tape stand again at the side of the machine away from everything and now I can just you know sew it on very simple very easily so quick. It's wonderful. So there's so much quilting fun you can have with your Continental M7. So make sure that you check out our genomi.ca website for more information. Check out the Genomi Life blog. Check out the Genomi America YouTube channel. Check out Genomi America's uh, Sewing Machines Facebook page. Again, so many resources available to you. Write me at classes at genomi dash canada.com if you would like more information about the Continental M7 class. So happy quilting! <laughs>